Um, as you will have just heard over the speaker, our speaker this morning is Commander Keith Wisniewski and I'm not going to do any more speaking because he's the one you've come to hear. Um, so over to you and thank you so much for giving us your time. Oh no, thank you Trish. Thank you really, for the opportunity and, and um, folks, thank you so much for your time as well. And, um, I'm going to share with you some of my experiences and um, I think uh, you see there I'm a bit old um, <laughs> and um, 50 odd years of experiences, where do you start? And, um, uh, so I've tried to capture those things that have been in my mind uh, when I think about my time uh, in the Navy. Um, not too sure what happened, whether it was old air or age with the wrinkles, but um, one of my vivid memories, of course, is uh, Pearl Harbour as a 17-year-old. Um, and um, not part of the fun times, of course, it is the serious times about making sure that your ship is ready to go to war, uh, which is of course where we were heading in 1964 um, to Malaya. But what immediately comes to mind though from a Navy perspective is the training uh, that I received on Motuhi Island um, in the Hauraki Gulf. And um, it was a bit notorious. At a hill that steep, you had to run up and down with buckets of sand or buckets of water. Of course, they're invariably empty by the time you got to the top. You had to go back and fill them up again. Uh, but good character building. Um, but all those things there, I think, um, uh, were very important in shaping who I am as a person um, and self respect, self discipline, hard work. I'll just build on that for a moment. I was when my first trip away from Auckland. To, to Suva, and for three days we walked trying to get a fan out of the funnel, which sucked the air out of the water, and, and you could only spend five minutes inside the funnel. And three of us worked for three days, and then slept for three days. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the, way, that's the job, and uh, you worked hard and you played hard, and uh, you had a lot of fun. Um, of course, on a ship, 250 guys in those days. Um, 52 of you in a dormitory. Um, tolerance played a big part. Indeed. Um, and, um, and respect for the other person's thoughts and feelings and opinions. Um, very quickly learnt right from wrong. Uh, not saying that I didn't have that sort of upbringing, but the Navy just reinforced those things that I can remember being on the parade ground at training camp, uh, lots of nights running around because obviously I wasn't listening or I was talking too much and thought I knew better. Um, but certainly learnt right from wrong very, very quickly. And of course, uh, I'm an electrician by trade, thinking to the Navy, uh, not just the Navy stuff, but civilian stuff as well. And they put you through all those good courses and qualifications. Um, and they do that very well. They do it very well, um, but of course when you're at sea, not every sea you go across is like a mill pond. It should be. It should be. <laughs> yeah. uh, and some of them are pretty rough. This isn't uh, too bad. Too bad, but I have known uh, we had straps on our bunks so you can strap yourself in. And coming out of Taiwan one year, heading to Hong Kong, uh, we weren't allowed out or up. And we had to strap ourselves into our bunks because it was just too dangerous. Um, Supposedly, these Type 12 frigates could roll to 45 degrees and roll back again. Um, not too sure whether it's just that the tank or at sea, but... Um, uh, just a question, you, so, so, so how long were you strapped on your bunks at that time? Uh, I think it's about eight hours. Goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. These, these uh, frigates here are only 2,500 tonnes. Uh, 2,500 tonnes in the sea are like a cork. We can compare that to an aircraft carrier, which is 80,000 tonnes. And uh, we used to chase those because if anybody came off the side in terms of aircraft, we were there to pick them up. Here's some of the highlights. Um, a 17 year old uh, in, in Malaya, we were out um, boarding junks because Indonesians were trying to get into Malaya. And uh, can I can remember standing there with a 17 year old electrician with big spotlights at night time on junks with a rifle. Didn't even think about it as the one pointing back at me. Uh, might well have been, wouldn't have a clue. Um, but yes, we would do that quite often. 
I did uh, 64, 65, 66, three years up in Malaya. And um, a lot of our times we had Gurkhas, which is a British um, army on board as well. We used to put them into the drop off in the jungle um, at night time in Borneo. We'd go out and search junks all night. In the morning we'd go back and pick them up out of the jungle, give them breakfast, give them a beer, and they'd have a shower because they'd cover them in mud. And uh, we'd sleep all day and go out and do patrols at night time. I don't know why, but my first Christmas away is just vividly in my mind um, in Singapore. Uh, an awesome um, British chief electrician who seemed to care about those young 17, 18 year olds and um, can still see myself sitting on the forecastle enjoying Christmas Eve in Singapore and uh, having a couple of beers, uh, which was really nice. You were watching satellites, what's this about? Well, of course, um, satellites were fascinating in those days, 60, 1964. The first one was only launched in 1958. And we were sailing up around through the tropics. We used to fly there at night time on the, on the forecastle on the deck and pick up satellites traveling across. It was just a sort of fascinating thing at the time. Um, and I mentioned Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor was a lot of hard work for six weeks uh, where they put the ship through warlike situations, uh, pretending that you were flooded, but lots of smoke, lots of smoke bombs, and uh, locking yourselves down. And um, uh, we had four generators on board, two main generators, two emergency generators. Just knock them off because you've been torpedoed and you've got to run around and get your emergency generators up, otherwise you've got no, no radar, no engines, no, no um, guns. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, Bill Harbour and um, I don't know, I think seemed to recall they had about seven winters in, in Pearl Harbour. It was pretty cool. Nice mm -hmm. place to have a winter. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mount Fujiyama, yeah. Mount Fujiyama in Japan, um, one of my next highlights. So there's the, there is um, the touch of some Malaya, Malaya there, and the Malaysian government, so they seem to you very much as well. Um, and of course, uh, we're in terms of Malaya and Anzac, of course, uh, lots of um, army, of course, were in Malaya, 50, 56 through to about 60. 66 comes to mind. So, um, but Mount, Mount Fujiyama was the fun side, and uh, six of us managed to climb Mount Fujiyama uh, in Japan. And uh, what was vividly in my mind is standing on the top of Mount Fujiyama at four o'clock in the morning. Um, the cloud is down there, and there's the sun coming up. And it was just ironic. We we're in the land of the rising sun, and here we were on top of Mount Fujiyama, and there's a big red sun. Uh -huh. well, fascinating. And the height of that mountain is? Uh, 3,700 metres comes to mind. Oh, it's 4,000. Yeah, it's all good. So, yeah, uh, um, uh, it was pretty easy climbing. Um, took us, uh, we started off about 7 pm at the base camp, well, as far as they could take us. 7 pm to 4 am, uh, what's that, 7 hours. And it took us two hours to come down. Um, <laughs> we just come down the lava slides. <laughs> Very pretty good. Um, Mura, uh, another highlight, um, of course, in 1973, 78, 73 comes to mind. Uh, and the government here said to uh, these Frenchmen stop testing your nuclear bombs. Um, and so we were sent to Mura uh, to just uh, show a bit of a protest. Um, and there was a Targo and Canterbury, as I got there in Canterbury, Targo did it about a week. And then we took over on a Saturday morning, and, um, and of course, um, fortunately or unfortunately, um, saw a bomb go up, um, took some photographs, a little bit silly really, uh, we never know quite about radiation, um, but um, took a photograph, and uh, what was fascinating for me was the, what's we looking for, the courage, uh, the commitment, sounds like Navy values really, of the small boats that were at Muraroa protesting. I mean, we were, we were two and a half thousand tonne. They were probably about a tonne. And um, they were bobbing around in the sea and uh, showing their protests uh, in terms of the commitment to their cause. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they were, they were amazing. Um, did we change anything? I'm not too sure, but we put our word out there. 
and um, said to the Frenchman, hey, don't like your nuclear testing, and it took a while for him to stop that. But, um, um, to your posting to Singapore, um, one of the other things I enjoyed about the Navy life, of course, is the opportunities you get. <coughs> in Singapore, back in the late 70s, uh, when I applied to go there, the Army had 400 houses in uh, Singapore, Malaysia and Penang that they used to house people in, and, um, and families, Kiwi families. And uh, they wanted somebody to, and they come furnished. And, um, and they wanted somebody to go out there and make sure that for two years the furnishing was kept up to scratch and clean and tidy. I'm an electrician, they go, oh, you picked me. <laughs> and uh, we were up in Canada at the time and the, the skipper came out and said, Wisniewski, I understand you applied for Singapore. And I said, yeah, I did, sir. He said, well, you didn't get it. Uh, oh, well, anyway, that's all right, put my hand up. He said, uh, you're not qualified, apparently. Okay, no, that's fine. This is housing. I'm out. Next morning, you come back and say, Was Nesky going to Singapore? I made you qualified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice, sir. Nice, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> Way to Singapore. And so I went over to my wife, of course, and said, uh, Hey, bub, uh, we're way to Singapore. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty cool. So we end up going to Singapore, my, my wife and my youngest boy. My oldest boy was at uh, boarding school in uh, Hakapara and Fielding. But, um, um, so for two years, uh, my eight-year-old um, got to have a new bunch of friends, a new culture. And um, I had 27 locals working for me in Singapore, and we looked after houses and made sure they were clean and tidy. And as I said, they come 40 finished, except for a toaster. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Everything, I mean, chairs, dresses, sheets, towels, <coughs> Everything plates, except yeah. for a toaster. <laughs> and uh, when somebody moved out, had some uh, local girl who used to go and clean it up, clean, put new sheets and all towels, and then another family would move in for two years. And, uh, mm. Of course, the Falkland War happened in 1982, and uh, the British and the Argentinians had a bit of a scrap. And um, we were asked, and of course, lots of their ships went to the Falklands and uh, they couldn't do their normal patrols around the Indian Ocean and so uh, we were sent up there to do their duty uh, part of your contribution to the global stage um, in, in the Indian Ocean and uh, fascinating places uh, down to Mombasa, Kenya, uh, Tanzania, Zanzibar mm. some of the, all those places you read about as a boy but you never think you'd ever get there and, uh, and it was fascinating. I could tell you a lot more stories. But what was interesting was, and I know Gloria, my partner, said, oh, not your safari story again. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to write to my two boys uh, every second day so they got a letter in the mail from Dad. And when I finished my safari, they got a letter. The first letter was 29 pages long. <laughs> and, um, and that's another story. Uh, but eight Kiwis, hired a van, uh, filled up our chili bin with beer and sandwiches. <laughs> And away we went and got stuck in that minute there with no petrol and had to go and see the governor and hey, can we have some petrol please? And you can give you 20 litres and, and the petrol tanks in Nairobi had been blown up so it was all quite fascinating. Quite scary when you're 500 kilometres away from your home uh, in Mombasa and you go, how the hell am I going to get home and there's no petrol? Uh, but uh, we were going to hop, hop on trains and jump trains. Fascinating how your know, ingenuity comes out. But we got back. And of course, in terms of opportunities, uh, here I am today uh, as the um, regional naval officer. Um, when I left the Navy uh, many years ago, I did 22 years regional Navy as saw there. And when I left, a good colleague of mine said, Hey, brother, you want to be an honorary naval officer? And I'm going, oh, What do I do? He said, I talk to mums and dads and do parades and young people. And I'm going, Oh, yeah. Said, they get paid? He says, no. I said, OK. That's all good. Payback time. The Navy was good to me. And so uh, in 1988, I became the Honorary Naval Officer. And uh, folks, here I am 33 years later. And um, enjoyed just doing these sorts of things. And um, because in my time in the Navy, there was never, ever a bad day. Mm. Never, ever a bad day. Um, every day's a good day. And I've been blessed. And um, probably made some good choices. We all make bad choices too, mate, don't do well, but um, um, 
Yeah, well, there we are. Eurobomb. There is. Eurobomb, yeah. Yeah. And you like that, too. You're a bit scary. Jeez. Um, I think uh, something like over the two ships, there are 500 sailors at Muraroa. Um, half of them don't, aren't here anymore. And, um, and at least half of those now, uh, and their children's children, are having uh, deformities and cancer related um, because of radiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky. I'm lucky, to, and uh, some of us are lucky. So I presume they check you for radiation or what? what? Uh, look, um, uh, when we were there, just give you a sense, uh, we shut the ship down in our ship. We shut it down at 4 a.m. We knew the bomb was going up at 8. Shut the ship down at 4 a.m. in the morning. You all go to action stations, put all your anti-flash on so you don't get burnt, all that sort of stuff. Put your gloves yeah. on, shut all the doors, um, put all your fans, internal fans on so you're pushing air out. So as if there's any cracks in any doorways, you put a pressure inside your ship, yeah. uh, pushing air out rather than sucking air in. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I presume, I wasn't up the bridge, but I presume we were upwind, uh, rather than downwind of the, of the bomb. Yeah. Yeah. But um, of course the issue for some who are on this co popper is that uh, all our fresh water is made from seawater. And that we make that all the time on our ships. And of course that's contaminated. Mm. And of course that's in your drinking and your cooking. Yeah. And all that. Mm. yeah. The Navy uh, today articulates its three core values as um, Courage, commitment, and comradeship, and um, <clears throat> and we didn't articulate those sorts of things in our day. We weren't that smart. But when I think about today's navy and those young people and the values that they operate by, we're no different. And of course, this is the same for the army and the air force. Um, and um, yeah, it's courage to do things, to try things, to be available, to work hard, defend your country, defend your sea lanes. Um, and uh, commitment to look after your mates as well. Uh, you get to always remember, um, wasn't part of this, but in Field Harbour, um, I don't know, second or third time there, um, one of our steam valves, was steam from the boiler and through the engine room, uh, wasn't shut properly. And, uh, and our, we all tested our throttle we on our engines and they weren't shut properly either. And so when we were ready to go, opened up the main steam valve and it popped steam straight through the engines and we took off. But we're still tied to the wolf. Mm. Ouch. 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 Big ouch. <laughs> but I remember the first thing you taught us is the hatch there, shut the hatch. Oh, the six people below, you yeah, know. I know. But actually, the ship's integrity is important. And so you just, but you, you're just committed to doing what you need to do to save your ship, and you might have to sacrifice some things. Um, yeah, and I said, comrades, should look after your mates, whether that's ashore, and you probably heard the Navy Navy was getting the scraps or something. But actually, it's about looking after your mates and making sure they're safe. Yeah, 15 minutes, there we go. Very good. Yeah, any, any questions at all? So, just going back to your Malay, Malayan times there, so you're dropping off troops in there, and also, what were you doing with the junks about? Oh, we, we, we were just, um, we were just uh, boarding junks, and just making sure that we weren't carrying um, uh, military personnel, or okay. supplies, or ammunition, because the Indonesians were trying to get into Malaya, and, um, and so just making sure they weren't infiltrating. And, and, and how many New Zealand ships would have been up there? Uh, one of the, well, in fact, I think there was two. Santon, Santon and Hickerton were two like mine sweeper uh, craft were manned by Kiwis. And that was permanent. And then uh, I think my first trip away, we were away for a year. And so over the year, um, I'm trying to remember, probably at least nine months of that was in Singapore. And then as we left, another one went up. So um, we had uh, Targo and Taranaki at the time. They were fairly brand new Type 12 frigates. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I understand, just digressing there, that I'm talking to a, a relative. He's in the military, he's a youngster in the, in the, in the army in there. And apparently they're not allowed to yell at people now. 
that they have to be really careful about how they're going to quote punish somebody, so you don't get to your your, your bucket of sand and go up yeah. there a zillion times. Yeah, your times have changed, and it's about respecting too. I, um, well, I've been fortunate that um, that after I left the navy, I joined the Department of Labour and, and eventually became the regional director. So I was the regional director for Work and Income here for the Bay of Plenty. Oh, yeah. And just finished last year, so for the last 20 odd years, 250 staff, and you don't need to yell. <laughs> you don't need to yell at anybody, actually. You can get the best out of people by being considerate, by being respectful, and actually explaining what you want done better. Yeah. And actually, if somebody is not towing the line, then you just need to make sure they bring that to their attention. And, um, and I'm big on choices. People, every, everything we do in life today is about choice. And every choice has a consequence, good or bad. To, um, sometimes so, so to add to that, then, so if you could name your greatest learning from your lifetime, what would it be? Um, I, given that last twenty odd years experience as well, what I learned was actually everybody has potential. Everybody has potential, and that um, if you um, if you tell people what you expect and you have trust in them, then they will normally deliver. Mm. And so uh, what we learned, is, I'm going to look like yourself, I'm way up another tangent, four quadrant leadership is uh, in the fourth quadrant. If you understand my expectations, if you understand them, and I trust you, and my door's always open if you've got a problem, people will normally deliver. And you're still uh, Devonport, is it still the training base? Devonport? Yeah. Devonport is? Oh, it's still. Yeah, so Devonport is uh, still the main base, and of course. You were there, um, yeah, you were there were you? You were at Devonport, were you? I spent a bit of time in Devonport in the, in the uh, workshops. Um, it's the workshops, but of course the training was done at Motihi Island. That finished uh, 1941, 41 through to uh, 60, end of 63. And then they moved to Vauxhall Road, which is an army base in Vauxhall Road, Devonport. And not too sure of the years there, but of course the, the um, basic common training young people, 150 of them probably today, are now over on the north side of the naval base in the store side. They've got a separate school over there now, Nazaringa. Hmm. So it's all, all in one place now. Morning, Do you keep an animal or what it did after hours work while at sea? Oh, jokes I call them, like the man who missing all that. Do you keep a animal? Do you keep a animal? Or what I mean is, you know, you've got a record of all of these with the head in the Navy, like you know, after no. work. <laughs> so no, I should have done. Should have done. I mean, like you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Commander, when you, you know, off duty, you know, the ocean and say anything. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, um, a young lady, young lady, <coughs> several years ago asked a bit of a story on me. And, <coughs> and so you do sort of pluck at your memory of it. And, um, but it's surprising what you do remember. But um, I think in, in my days, um, I don't know, it was a young thing, it was fun. Uh, we spent a lot of time, so you never read a book. We used to play uppers, which is a Navy style of Ludo. And uh, it'd be big competitions. Yeah. Okay. And uh, they could go all night. Um, to a, we never kept records of stuff, but um, yeah, just log it all in here. So, on that, have you ever thought of writing your history down? I haven't thought about it, but it might be a good idea. I think so. Mm -hmm. How many people get to see an atomic bomb going off? Yeah, yeah. And so, like that. So, and as you appreciate, once, once the oldies go, that history is lost. In there. Yes. So, yes. a reference would be. Be, 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 be really helpful. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. Um, yeah. Just a wee story if I too. I was in the Mediterranean on, on a big cruise. There was a ship, 3,000 passengers and 1,800 crew thereabouts. And we were in the, uh, we couldn't land this port, so the, the captain came down and gave a talk on his history. And he'd, he'd done banana boats and then he went to the States and got a, became a commercial. Uh, pilot yes. and got back into ships again and I posed him that question, if you could name your greatest learning what would it be? And he goes, to listen. Uh -huh. <laughs> to listen, because as you know, you remember that example where that the captain of a ship and off the Italian coast there, he didn't listen and he yes. and the ship fell over? Yes. Yes indeed there. So yeah. I, I used to right, I often use that phrase actually you need to listen to understand. 
No, very good, thank you. Thank yeah, you. absolutely, mm. absolutely. Mm. But, um, but mine was a bit more about having space some people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Everybody who's in the military gets that one. No, not Lockwood. Yeah, everybody because in the military. I proved the last week. Everybody in the military who does six months. Pardon? Anybody who's in the military for at least six months gets this medal. No, no, I mean, for being in a nuclear team. Oh, nuclear team. Yeah, that's the one I'm pushing for. To me, well, I still suffer from some of the that, as you know, being a spark, I had to shimmer up the room with being a salt. And I, well, of course, I was one of four on that ship. That new place, you know, mm. a spark. And well, I kept, as today, I keep on doing this. Well, I keep, keep trying, my, keep pushing. What I really come to ask about doing for this, that even though I've met you at the armistice, but I, you know, you well know the process, keep uh, meeting you know, no basis. And I'm, because of this, mm. because, you know, and all the boys, they, I keep doing, I'm just, you know, up to date. But um, I was wondering if you could point me in a family where I might. I'll come back to you after this, yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's the speed of the frigates? You know, I've been in a frigate, you know, just a lot of day. Uh, you're saying 45 degree angle rolls, because I know they're long and thin. Yes. What speed are they all? Oh, uh, I used to cruise is about 18. 18. 18 knots, yeah. Um, it's easy um, to engine, speed of the engine. Yeah, top speed, probably about 24, 25. Oh, okay. the, latest, the latest ones probably get up to 31. But I used to cruise at 18, 15 to 18. Yeah. Yeah, long yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, one of the comments I'm going to make uh, was actually um, where else would you go when you actually wake up in the morning and you find that you're home if you actually moved 400 kilometres? I had to work it out the other night 400 kilometres, goodness me, 18 knots. I see there's a submarine missing at the moment on the news. There's a submarine missing. Ah, yeah. Because um, yeah. these, um, what, those, uh, those two type 12s, are in fact, were anti submarine. Yeah. And they've spent a lot of time learning how to chase submarines. Mm. Of course, they had mortars on the back as well. Mm. Yeah, for dispatching submarines. Mm. Mm. That has been absolutely fascinating. I have really enjoyed it. Has everybody else yeah, enjoyed indeed. it? Indeed. That yes. has been. Yeah. Um, you. And you, you have just see. exemplified the, um, the the value of you. We can just see it. It shines out of you that you care about people and that you are trying for the best for people. Yep. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for coming. Um, I have learnt a lot. My grandfather was in the. Uh, First World War, and he was in the Merchant Navy. Mm. Um, mm. 
apparently got torpedoed three times. Oh, yeah, yeah, and unfortunately was sick with the fourth that the ship, his mates went, and it went down. It's, um, kind of lost an yeah. awful lot. So otherwise I wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, but yeah, just it kind of makes me think, oh my goodness, um, yeah. I'm, I'm not very good on way out there. It's, you know, there's yucky things underneath that might eat me if <laughs> and I'm not a good swimmer. So. Um, but thank you so much. It really has been wonderful. Um, and um, yeah, thanks guys. I think we'd all like to say thank you, wouldn't yeah, we? Thank you. Thank you so much.